everyone. Welcome to a seat at the table. We're so glad that you could join with us uh, today. Uh, today is the day that the Lord has made, and uh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. So uh, just join with us. Uh, stand up at your home, wherever you're at watching this. Um, I believe the words are on the screen. You just sing along with us and praise the Lord uh, because He's good, right? God is good all the time. I want to scream it out from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills my life. Your love amazes me. Come on and make that your declaration. I want to scream it out from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills my life. Your love amazes me. And I sing because you are good. And I dance because you are good. And I shout because you are good. You are good to me. Lord, a shout of praise today. We just exalt your name. We lift your name high. Oh, nothing and no one comes anywhere close to you. The earth and oceans deep only reflect this truth that in my darkest night you shine
cross the divide lost in our sin who made us alive how can we ever hold it inside we can't hold it back cause we're gonna live too high up, lift him up, never gonna stop singing. Every track, every tongue, every heart will sing, every knee we will bow to the risen King. Lift him up, lift him up, never gonna stop singing. Every track, every tongue, every heart
and welcome to your seat at the table. You know, at God's table, everyone has a seat. What a wonderful worship we had today. Thank you, worship team. Thank you for uh, the beautiful music. Um, you know, I, I just want to get into the Word today and just show you some things. I'm so excited about what God uh, has shown me and how uh, we can go into God's Word and His Word gives us comfort. Go with me um, to the book of Acts chapter 16. And verse 25 and 26. Now this is a story of Paul and Silas. They, they had been uh, wrongly in prison. They have been beaten. And here they are in the prison cell. And what do they do? 
You know, oftentimes people ask me, you know, when you, when all things around you feel like you're enclosed in, especially uh, nowadays as we're dealing with this pandemic still, we, we feel closed in. We might not be like the uh, Paul the Apostle or Silas, but we are definitely feeling a place of isolation and hemmed in. And let us look at the Word of God in chapter 16. And, and I hope that this Word today will give you uh, uh, encouragement, uh, guide you, show you a couple things uh, to help you this week and the weeks to come uh, about what to do, okay? So look at uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 25, 26. It says, But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening with them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. You know, um, let us pray. I, I want to talk to you today on the subject of get your praise on. Get your praise on. Praise. You know, we, we say it all the time, praise and worship. I want to praise God. But today I want to encourage you to get your praise on. So Lord, we pray over this word. Let the word become rhema in our ears, uh, a revelatory. Let us be able to understand it. Let us able to see it. Let us able to consume uh, your word. Help us to Lord to learn something we haven't learned before. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, also go with me to the book of 2 Chronicles. And it's very, keep your place there. But in the book of 2 Chronicles 5, verse 13 through 14, um, this is when Solomon had finished the temple. And they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant into the new temple that he had just built. And it says that indeed it came to pass when the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanksgiving or thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endures forever. That the house, the house of the Lord was filled with the cloud so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord Fill the house of God. You know, uh, in times like this, we go back to the book of Acts and, 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 and Paul and uh, Silas, were, uh, uh, they were um, wrongly in prison. Not only they were in, arrested wrongfully, they were in prison. And before that, they were beaten and then in prison. And But the Bible says that at midnight, they began to sing hymns. You know, maybe you're feeling hemmed in right now. I, I, uh, hopefully you're not uh, in prison, hopefully, or you haven't been wrongly in prison or beaten, but maybe you feeling hemmed in. We're dealing with all this pandemic all around us. And, and here we see that uh, uh, Paul and Silas in a place where we think that they have no hope, yet they began to do something that is amazing. You know, most people, and uh, I would say most people would say that when they're in a situation of, of wrongly been uh, arrested, uh, beaten and wrongly in prison, uh, the uh, last thing we would want to do is magnify or worship the Lord. But you know what? Today, I want to remind you that no matter how lonely, maybe you're feeling hemmed in, but you need to get your praise on. Get, get some music. Get uh, things moving because when you begin to praise the Lord, it allows you strength. It gives you strength to move forward. It gives you strength. You imagine sitting in a prison cell, your body is aching, uh, and yet they began to worship the Lord. You know that in the darkest of times, in the times that you, I feel the most lonely and weak, I began to worship the Lord. When my strength is gone out of me, I began to worship the Lord. I put on uh, praise music. I listen and I begin to lift my hands. Could you imagine here the Apostle Paul uh, uh, being where he was and he begins to worship the Lord? You know that the, the, the aspect of praise was also in the uh, 
Old Testament. Solomon, you know, we just read Solomon, uh, when he built the temple, he brought the ark in. And the Bible says that the trumpeters and the singers uh, were as one to make sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they had lifted up their voice with the trumpets, the symbols, the instrument, and praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever, that the house of the Lord begin uh, to be filled with his glory. You know, the Bible says that uh, you and I are the house or the temple of the Holy Spirit. So that, you know, uh, in this time, don't focus so much on what is going on and, and, you know, your mind and this news and that news, the negativity. Are we going to get sick? We're not going to get sick. How's the economy? But begin to get your praise on. Begin to dance before the Lord. Begin to lift up your hands and praise God because this will help your spirit be nourished. You know, uh, in, in, in the times uh, uh, of great trial, we need to learn that, you know what, we got to get our focus on the Lord. You know, I, I, today uh, I'm thinking, you know, maybe you're in that place and what do I do? See, one of the things that we, don't, uh, we uh, have a misunderstanding about church is, you know, when people come and, and they just come for the sermon, let's say. Uh, you know that the sermon is uh, for us to receive. You know, it's just uh, receiving. You know, we are not giving anything. But when we come early and we come on time to church, do you know that when we begin to enter praise and worship, it is a sign of giving because praising isn't really for us, although it's beneficial for us, but praising is for God. You have to understand that. That, that praise is not for us, but it is for God. It, it is us magnifying God. It is for us uh, to, to honor Him. You know, one of the things I want to tell you, that praise honors God. You know, that uh, no matter what situation you're in, praise honors God. It is, uh, that's why when Jesus taught the disciples to, to pray, he says, when you pray, uh, uh, say this, it says, uh, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, or holy, or honoring is your name, wonderful is your name. Start your life with praise, because you and I, uh, no matter uh, what's going on, maybe you uh, are worried about your work, maybe you're worried about your business, maybe you're worried uh, uh, about your future, but what I want to tell you is you and I, we've got to get our praise on. We've got to praise God, that God is still faithful. God is still good. And see, this is Paul and Silas, uh, and hopefully none of us are in that situation. But I can imagine me, I'm like, man, can I really lift up my voice and sing hymns and praise God in the midst of tiredness and weariness in the midst of being wrongfully accused in the midst of uh, uh, being in prison in the darkest dungeon uh, in those days yet we uh, they begin to praise brothers and sisters no matter where you are you've got to begin to praise You've got to break through. And the Bible says that at midnight, at midnight, you know that midnight is the, the most silent hour. Midnight is when everything stops. At midnight, uh, you go from the old day into the new day. See, the Bible says that uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. And so maybe you've had a bad day, but at midnight, this, the Bible says that at midnight, but at midnight, Paul and Silas uh, we're praying and singing hymns to the Lord. You know, you're, uh, that means that, you know what? I might have had a bad day yesterday, but today I'm choosing to worship God. I'm choosing to praise him because God is still on the throne. God still answers prayer. God still at midnight. What is your midnight? When are you going to have that breakthrough? Because we often say, oh, at the midnight hour is the, the toughest hour. At the midnight hour is when uh, uh, the most silent brothers and sisters, uh, while it might be silent, but as believers in Christ at midnight, we need to be singing at the darkest time of the night. We need to be singing praises to God. 
Maybe uh, I'm not talking uh, physically or, or literally, but I might be talking to you right now that you might be going through a midnight time in, in your, your heart, in your spirit. You're like, Pastor, you know what? It's hard for me to praise. It, it's hard. I, I, I don't see the future. I'm hurting right now. I'm lonely. I feel isolated. I'm maybe even depressed. Uh, I, I don't have family. All these things, maybe all these crazy things in your mind. I'm worried about being sick. I'm worried of not providing. You know, I understand all that. But you have to understand one thing. You and I have to honor God in no matter what situation. Because you and I, the only hope we have is in Christ Jesus. The only hope. So the first thing is you have to understand that praise is like a weapon. You know, when you praise God, it's like a weapon. That you, you are honoring God. You're saying, God, you're my hope. You're my glory. You're my provider. Nothing else is uh, uh, more than you. And God, you know my need. You're going to provide. It is a weapon. Did you know that we, we don't have any other forms of weapons? You know, in 2 Corinthians, I want to read something to you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 5, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments. How many arguments have we been hearing? Every, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ. You know, one of the biggest battles that we battle is right here. The, the thing between our two ears, it's our mind. We are always battling our mind. That's why I'm telling you right now, we've got to get our minds because we are trying to wrestle our mind well, by the physical flesh. And the Bible says that we, we, though we walk in the flesh, but we do not war according to the flesh, uh, but uh, we war according to uh, the weapons of our warfare. And the weapons of our warfare, brothers and sisters, is praise. See, Paul and Silas was in prison. There was nothing they could do. They were in chains. They were bound. They were behind bars. They were under lock and key. They were under guards. Their feet was bound. Their bodies aching. What can they do? And what they realized is that while their outward man was perishing, but their inner man was being renewed. Why? It's because they got their praise on. They got their worship on. They got their saying, God, I can't do anything, but you can. They began to honor God. And the Bible says that the moment they honor, the chains begin to fall off. The earth began to shake and the jail cells began to open. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what has bound you. But what I know is when you can get your praise on, things begin to happen. Things begin to change. When we begin to honor God. The second thing we, you, you have to know is when we praise God, it reminds us of his character. You know, that he is just, that he's righteous, that he is honest. He's a God that cannot lie, that he has to keep his word. The Bible says that uh, um, God cannot lie. You know, that, that there are people telling us things all the time, but God cannot lie. And, and so he has to, if he's promised us, he has to keep his word. God cannot lie. Brothers and sisters, today, I want to remind you, praise uh, is your weapon. You've got to get your praise on. It is the weapon uh, that deals with your mind that is trying to cause you to fear. It's the weapon. Uh, 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 praise is the weapon that will break through the things that have you bound. Praise is the weapon that will cause you uh, to break through from the uh, old day into the new day. Remember, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying uh, and singing hymns to God. At midnight is a time where it is between the old day and the new day. At midnight, things begin to change. But what they did was very important. What they did was instead of complaining, uh, they began to sing hymns. They begin to worship God. I want to encourage you this week, brothers and sisters, and those that are watching me, to get 
your praise on. You know what? Turn off the news. Turn off the arguments. Begin to worship God. If you've got to dance, get your dance on. If you've got to clap, get your clap on. If you've got to lift your hands, get it up and lift it up because praise honors God. Secondly, it reminds us of his character. Lord, you are righteous. You are just. You cannot lie. You're not a man that you lie. The God that you are not limited by a uh, 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 disease or sickness it doesn't frighten you God you've already won the victory God you are the you have made me the head and not the tail that you are my life that in you I live and move and have my being that you are the alpha and the omega see when you begin to praise God you fill your heart just like the temple of Solomon, when they began to worship, yeah, the temple began to fill with God's glory. Instead of filling our hearts with bad news, instead of filling our hearts with disease, of the news of the disease and what can happen, what couldn't happen. Uh, uh, you know, people are not getting money. They're not opening. Business. Brothers, sister, I want to tell you that just like maybe you feel bound, maybe you feel bound like Paul and Silas in prison. Maybe, uh, maybe not physically, but mentally. I want to tell you at midnight, begin to praise. Right at this moment, begin to worship. The third thing I want to remind you what praise does. It reminds us of God's faithfulness. God's faithful. I know it might not look like it, but God is faithful. No one is more faithful than God. But God is more faithful than we are, for sure. That if he's faithful to, to bless us, he's faithful to keep his promise, he's faithful to his word, that uh, he is not a man that he should lie, that God is faithful. It reminds us, God, and that you are still on the throne, that your word is yea and amen. At midnight, wherever you are, begin to praise God. Begin to worship Him. The fourth thing I want to leave you with is praise turns our focus to God. You know what we've been focusing on? Man, brothers and sisters, I, I'm not going to lie. I, my mind, with all this stuff is going on, my mind's going everywhere. Every day it seems like we're listening to news. What's happening? What's the government doing? What's the president doing? What's the Congress people doing? What's the senators doing? What, man, my mind is so focused. Don't allow that. So what happens is this. When we begin to praise God, we begin to lift up his goodness and our minds begin to focus on the supernatural. You know, when we are able to focus on on the supernatural it begins to allow us to escape our physical limitations because remember although we live in the flesh our warfare is not in the flesh it's not carnal but it's mighty through the pulling down of strongholds pulling down arguments and imaginations now imagine you know in the king james version it would say uh, that uh it would cast down uh, uh uh imagination or pull down imagination so much of our mind is imagining all this chaos but you know brothers and sisters when we begin to get our praise on it changes our focus to god it changes our mind. It begins to allow us to bring captivity to our mind and our thought in obedience to God. So you have to, re I, I have to remind myself all the time, God, you're my provider. God, you are my shepherd. God, you are my healer. God, you love my kids. You love my family more than even me. And I feel so bound sometimes, but then when I can lift up my hands and say, God, I'm blessed because you're my God. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed going and coming. And God, I am the head and not the tail because you are the one. You know what? In the book of Isaiah, it, uh, it says that we are righteous, not because of us, he says that the Bible says the Lord says that they are righteous because of me. Think about that. See, when we begin to get our praise on, when we begin to, to worship the Lord with all of our hearts, when we begin to lift and jump up and down, you know, sometimes we just got to jump up and down to get out of our flesh. It begins to change our mind and our focus on God. And lastly, Praise is what we give instead of what we receive. 
You know, uh, when we go to church, you, you know, giving, we always teach. What is, what, you know, in our family, I remember our, my, my, my girls, my, my kids, um, we have this saying, and most of you would say it, you know, caring if you, is sharing. Uh, you know, it's a way of us teaching our kids that, you know, what I have, uh, I want to give to you. You know, and, and it's the same way that when we give financially uh, or when we give our offering and our tithe, it's saying, God, uh, I'm giving because it teaches us not to be self-centered. It teaches us to be uh, generous. It teaches us uh, to not be selfish. And so when we praise, it's not about us, it's about him because we come to praise him. Him. And so we say, Lord, I praise you uh, with all of my heart. I praise you. See, the other thing is it teaches us that um, uh, to be humble because praise takes us out of our comfort zone, doesn't it? How many here could say that? How many times have you said, I don't feel like praising? I said, you know, and, and, and guess what? Praise is a sacrifice. That's why praise is what you give. And, and if you really love someone, you give sometimes in sacrifice, sometimes sacrificially. You give. See, brothers and sisters, right now, you might not feel like worshiping. You might not feel like praising. You might not feel like clapping your hands. But you know what, brothers and sisters, when you love God, when you love him, you say, Lord, it doesn't matter how I feel. I'm getting my praise on. I'm getting my, look at yourself or, or look, if somebody's at your house right now, look to them and say, get your praise on, get your praise on, get your worship on, get your music on and begin to honor God. Because at midnight is between the old day and the new day. And what you're going to do with the new day? Are you going to still be worried about something you can't control? Are you going to still be worried about uh, now that you can't move and can't do? What are you going to do? You're going to get your praise on? And I encourage you, brothers and sisters, that you get your praise on. However you can get it. If you like, you know, like me, I like listening to gospel music. Uh, uh, I like to listen to all kinds of music, but I like g gospel music. I like, you know, uh, all that old timey stuff. I listen to hymns. Uh, you know, I listen to uh, all new music. I listen to Hillsong. I listen to Elevation Worship. I listen to uh, Bethel music. I listen, if it's God in it, I want to worship. I want to praise. And you know what? There's times that I don't feel like it, to be honest with you. But you know what I... Realize what the Bible say. It says this. It is more blessed to give than to receive. I mean, I'm like, well, I never saw that scripture like that because it's always like, oh, when we take an offering, it's more blessed to give, give than receive. But the reality is when we're praising God, we are blessed. You know why? Because when the praise go up, the old people would say, the, the older generation, the blessings come down. And so when we begin to praise God, now I understand that scripture in a whole different way. That God, when I begin to give to you, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Because then my temple, this thing, this thing, this thing called LT, Lam, it begins to fill this temple with his presence. And when I can fill this temple with his presence, I can move on. I'm not a worry. My focus is right. I'm on the right track because you know what? I don't want to go into another day and I'm feeling bound, but I'm going to another day lifting up the name of Jesus. And so I encourage you wherever you are. I don't care where you are. Take a few minutes and get your praise on. Get your praise on. Get your worship on. And watch the Lord if he doesn't move things and do things. And watch you see if your heart doesn't feel lighter. Watch you see if your heart doesn't get filled with his presence. And your home. I encourage you, brothers and sisters. You know, this, this service, maybe you're listening to me. And you're like, man, this guy's crazy. You know, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't feel like it. But I had to challenge you. Why don't you get your praise on? 
Why don't you begin to honor God? Why don't you begin to re remind yourself of his character? When you worship, you think about, oh God, you're magnificent. Oh God, you're, you sit on the throne. Oh God, you never seen the righteous forsaken nor your seed begging for bread. Oh God, you created me in your image. Oh God, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You begin to remind your heart and you know, and you and I, when we begin to do that, we know that we serve a mighty God. And when we serve a mighty God, it helps us to move forward, not bound. I just want to leave you with that thought today and this week and weeks to come. Get your praise on. Get your praise on. Heavenly Father, I pray for those that are listening. And Lord, although this message, God, uh, might, uh, I, I wanted it to be simple. I wanted it to come across, Lord, to encourage each and every person to just get their praise on and worship you and magnify your name. Because I know that when we do it, God, uh, we remind ourselves that you, we serve a God of impossibles. We serve a God of miracles. We serve a God uh, that is a, a transcendent God, that, that, that is not limited by time or space or difficulty. Lord, when we begin to praise you, Lord, things happen. Bonds are broken. Our heart is full of your glory. Heavenly Father, bless those that listen. Encourage them wherever they may be, God. I ask that you speak to their heart just like you um, spoke to so many people through the history of time in your word and even beyond your word. Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you would encourage them, Holy Spirit, to just get their praise on. Bless you. Bless your family. I bless you. May God bless you. Get your praise on. Go with God. Go in peace. Just worship God. Even if you just lift up your hands, say, God, I magnify you today. Do it. May God bless you. I'll see you next time. Stay in contact with us. Check us out on our Facebook page, all the social media and our website. We love you. You know, also on Wednesday nights, I'm, I'm teaching at seven o'clock about the Holy Spirit. So come and join us. Get more information from our social media and our website. We love you. God loves you. And I love you. See you next time.